Hello, and welcome back to the Mutation Surveyor webinar series, working with your Mutation Surveyor project in the Graphical Analysis Display. As a reminder, this is a three-part webinar series pertaining to how to use the Graphical Analysis Display, or GAD, to review and edit your project data. Last time, we reviewed the basics of the different panes in the GAD. Today, in part two, we will become more familiar with the details of the sample traces pane. Please make sure you are already familiar with the basic layout and description of the GAD by watching part one of this webinar series or the introductory overview webinar. To learn how to use the sample traces pane along with the mutation table pane to add and edit variant calls for a sample within your project, please view part three of this webinar series. The sample traces pane of the GAD is an essential component for project review. It allows for manual review and confirmation of mutation calls through the display of the anti-correlation technique results. Bidirectional analysis is provided in a single view by grouping the forward and reverse directional traces together to better visualize whole sample analysis for an amplicon. The pane can also be used to confirm proper amplicon coverage by displaying regional information such as primers, ROIs, CDS, and gene. Let's take a closer look. The sample traces pane, also known as the electropharogram pane, displays the traces for a selected sample. When working with bidirectional samples, the traces will be grouped by direction. Traces to the right of the blue vertical bar represent the forward direction, and traces to the right of the tan vertical bar represent the reverse direction. The outermost traces are the reference traces, with the sample traces appearing in the middle. The innermost traces are the mutation traces. Trace type, meaning reference or sample, name, sequence direction, lane quality, and any trace comments are displayed above each trace. Please note that reference traces derived by the software, which occurs when no reference traces are loaded into the project, include the word synthesis in the file name. The mutation trace highlights the uniqueness of mutation surveyor by providing key information for project analysis, including the results from the anti-correlation technique and other important parameters for variant detection. The software performs a physical comparison between reference and sample at every peak location, looking at factors such as peak height, area, color, and noise in the region, and indicates any differences with the peak in the mutation trace. The larger the peak, the greater the discordance. The color of this peak represents the type of nucleotide change detected. Each of these factors receives a score, and if these scores reach a certain threshold, a substitution variant will be called at this location. We see these scoring factors placed above the mutation peak of a called mutation and also below in the mutation table pane. Substitution types that will have the greatest amount of discordance will be homozygous in nature. We expect to see large peaks in the mutation trace. Peaks in the mutation trace that appear approximately half this height may be representative of a heterozygous substitution, like we see here. The presence of homozygous insertion and deletion events is monitored and detected through the mobility line, which is the green line running horizontally through the middle of the mutation trace. The mobility line tracks alignment between the reference and sample and fluctuates with changes in sample migration time. The mobility line will turn from green to red when a homozygous indel event has been detected. Spikes in the mobility line can indicate deletion events, and when called, we will see a gap placed in the sample trace in a horizontal red line in the mutation trace across the location of the event. Dips in the mobility line can indicate homozygous insertion events. When such an event is called, we see a gap placed in the reference trace in a horizontal red bar with green arrows for an insertion and a horizontal red bar without green arrows for a duplication event placed at this location in the mutation trace. Heterozygous insertion and deletion events are detected using the deconvolution of alleles and are indicated in the mutation trace by a horizontal brown bar across the start site. This variant type may be further analyzed in the heterozygous indel detection tool, which is covered in our heterozygous indel detection webinar. Finally, small green bars will be placed at locations of possible low-frequency variants when the check 2D setting is selected in the mutation project settings prior to running the project and when paired bidirectional samples are loaded. 
However, it is important to remember that these are not considered called variants and would still require manual addition. Please see our webinar on low frequency variant detection for additional details. The mutation trace displays additional information to help with the review process. To get a better view of the contents of this trace, we can zoom out. Two vertical blue bars are present, which indicate the borders of the comparison region. The comparison region is the portion of the trace the software was able to use for automatic variant detection. The light tan horizontal bar indicates alignment to the gene region, and the yellow arrowed bar indicates the coding region. Other regional information that can be displayed, if available in the GemBank file, includes regions of interest and primer regions as displayed here in pink and gray, respectively. If the loaded GemBank or Seq file includes variant information, these will be displayed as tick marks in the mutation trace, with the color representing the nucleotide substitution type. To learn more about using this pane for the editing process, please continue to watch part 3 of this webinar series. This ends part 2 of our webinar on utilizing the graphical analysis display in mutation surveyor software. For more information or to request a free 35-day trial, please visit softgenetics.com or send an email to info at softgenetics.com. All technical inquiries can be sent via email to our technical support group at tech underscore support at softgenetics.com. Thank you for watching and please check the description of this video for links to all of the related webinars referenced today.